We are pleased to bring you the first episode of the History of Smyrna. Today, we're standing in front of a replica of the original Hilltop Rosenwald School. This school is one of 5,000 built 100 years ago across the rural South for the sole purpose of educating African-American students. The stories that you're going to hear today are part of the fabric of our community. They weave together the past and the present. This is our town and our history. We invite you to enjoy the history of Smyrna. I'm Coon Victory, and we're here today to talk about the city of Smyrna and, and different surroundings of the city of Smyrna, and specific, specifically today, we're talking about Hilltop area. I grew up uh, a little area outside of Smyrna called Old Jefferson, but I've been in Smyrna all my life, and I uh, attended Smyrna High School and graduated from MTSU, came back and worked at Cross and Supply Company and uh, retired from there, and today I'm just taking it easy. I'm Patsy Brown. I came to Smyrna in 1960 when I married my husband who was stationed at Seward Air Force Base. I'm originally from Wilson County. I'm Jocelyn Wright McCoy. I've been here all my life, born and raised. Actually was born at Goodall Clinic, uh, which is gone now, but um, just been here all my life except for when I went off to school and came back. And so I uh, grew up in the Hilltop area, and Catherine Wright was my mother. My name is Marion Appleton, and I was raised and born here in Smyrna. I moved to Laverne for 24 years, and then I came back home. I'm Bill Culbertson, and I've been here for 63 years. Uh, I've uh, lived close to the Hilltop area, and uh, very fortunate uh, to be here in Smyrna. And I'm Cindy Tolliver Smith, and I've lived in Smyrna all my life, uh, 53 years, and uh, lived lived on Hilltop. was born was raised on Hilltop, and um, it's just a, it's a great community. Today we are meeting in uh, the Rosenwall Community Center, which is a replica of the Rosenwall School, which was uh, built in uh, 1927, and. Uh, I don't know, Miss Thee, were you fortunate enough to go to school here at Rosenwald? Yes. Do you recall some of your days and some of your teachers? <laughs> <laughs> yes, my mother was, was the first graduate. She was in the first class of the eighth graders to graduate from Rosenwald. And uh, I miss mean, Rosie Patton, you know, she was one of those, and uh, Evelyn Richardson. And my first grade teacher was Miss Johnson. She's up there on the pictures. And then the second was Mary Levi Codwright, and then Allison D. Washington was the seventh and eighth grade teacher. Well, I, I believe it closed around 1960. And uh, at that time, I don't, Jocelyn, I doubt if you were a student here at Rosenwald in 1960. Well, actually, I was. Um, I actually went through half of my fourth grade year. So, cause, so I was born in 1957, so it was still open for a while. And we integrated to the Rock School uh, halfway through my fourth grade. And that's when my culture shock came. <laughs> I was like, where are these people coming from? But, uh, but the transition was really good. I mean, we, I, I was, my parents were, you know, God-fearing, we, you know, so we loved everybody. And so it was really a good transition. I didn't have any really major issues. Um, I mean, I was just everybody's friend. <laughs> but I, I remember Miss Screws was my sixth grade teacher. And I remember she had terrible migraine headaches. And this is bad to say, but she would always take a nap. So when she took a nap, it was like, hey, we, got, we can have fun now. You know, we had to be quiet. But we, so so that was, you shouldn't remember that kind of stuff. But, it was fun, so yeah, the it was, it was a culture shock though. And, uh, 
But I didn't realize that you were that old to be a student I back am. in there. I am. I am 63 years old. Well, you're the youngest one in the bunch. <laughs> <I'm sure. laughs> no, Bill said he was 62. Tom, Bill did you go to the old, to the one when they moved over the, by the Johnson? Mm -hmm. Did you go to the road over mm -hmm. there? That's the one I went to. Oh, you didn't go to this? Uh, I didn't go where, not, not the one like right across from Miss Carey. Uh-huh. Oh, you didn't, didn't go, go to, to the old one. one. I didn't go to that one. I went to the one. The new one. Where it is now. Oh, right. there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, thought that I, think, was I didn't think I'm she was sorry. at the other one. We yeah. were talking to one right behind us here. That's where oh, I was talking. Oh, okay, she wasn't there. Bad. Now, that's Miss <laughs> D. You, went to, you attended when it was there. I went to that there. one. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So the other Rosenwald. Smyrna West. Smyrna West. Smyrna West. Yes. Yes. Cindy, your granddad, had one of the main places here on Hilltop. Will you tell us a little bit about yes, that? Yes, he had a, a store right there. It's, it's gone now when they widened the road, um, when they widened the old Nashville Highway, they completely took the building, but um, Tolliver's Market, and um, it, it was just, a, it was a neat gathering place for the community. And I remember going there as a little girl, um, and just seeing so many people and you know um i, I remember there was a, the black and white the the floor was like that black and white uh concrete checkered concrete and um people would come in i remember when i was a little girl i had gotten a pair of boots for christmas and um I th thought, you know, I could tap dance, and when people came in, <laughs> I would do a little tap dance for, for them. money. Uh, no, I don't remember any money <laughs> changing hands, yeah. but uh, I remember everybody was just real good natured and uh, just just loved on me, and I remember just, you know, stocking shelves and um, and just uh, it was just a, it was a great community. Great community. I was always amazed at the rolling store. Yes. You know, when they load it up and then they go down. Yes, and yes. People let us go in and look, you know, all this sales. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. It was real neat. Though. Yeah, so, so I guess before he opened the store, he had the pedal, we, we, it, it was always told to me, called the peddling truck. <laughs> yeah, and uh, taken, you know, out to farming right. communities and stuff. That yeah. That was nice. Miss D hit me on this rolling store, but I believe that Mr. Pete or, or Tommy Floyd, one, would drive it out in the rural area. Where they go. People that had a harder time coming to the grocery store. Right. And he would have items that you would get in, in the grocery store. store, and he would go out to say, Miss Johnson out on uh, Lee Road, and he, Miss Johnson might trade chickens or eggs right, or something, some or milk or something, <laughs> for the products that they had on that right. peddling store. Yeah, I remember him talking about, he, you know, he would, I, I never got to ride on the rolling store, but he would tell me stories about, you know, okay, lessons, you know, never get coal oil on the flour sacks because people make their underwear out of that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I remember that really well. <laughs> it's very that. important. <laughs> you brought that up. I remember my mama making us some shirts out of flour sacks. Yeah, yeah. flour sacks were a big deal and they yeah. were different patterns and... Well, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and I remember mother would uh, maybe buy one this week or a month, and then she would say, "Don't sell that one because I need some more to finish this dress." <laughs> <laughs> and he would put it on the bottom of the stack because they'd have them stacked up. Because my dress was started, but it needed some another piece, so she had to wait until we bought another sack of flour. Jocelyn, do you remember the? Telefarrell's Market? Absolutely. I mean, you know, that was a highlight of your day if you got to walk up the store. And then, like, on the bottom, it was like the two for a penny candy. And so, you know, if you had a nickel, it was all, you know, oh, yeah. you rich. Then. You were rich, it's right. <laughs> Did you share? Well, I gave him one piece, yeah. you know. Yeah. No, no. Well, maybe. So. <laughs> we're, getting, we're getting not confirmation on that. Yeah. I just, <laughs> the ones that were broken or something. The ones, yeah, the ones that were broke, that's right. And of course, they didn't, I was like, baby, glad I'm giving you this, you know. But Patsy, no. do you remember Telefarrell's Market? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember it. Well, I mean, that was a highlight, and everybody in the community, and if you see them walking up the store and you forgot something, can you bring it? I could just run down there and give them, like, you know, quarter or something. But when we, we were smaller, some. we wasn't, we, we, Johnson was on our side walking up the old mm -hmm. Cena Spring now, so mm -hmm. we weren't allowed to cross the street. 
<laughs> it wasn't that much traffic. Right. No, it really <laughs> wasn't. Yeah. But we did. We we stayed on the Johnson side. Yeah. You know, yeah. Mr. Johnson with the big penny cookie about Two that looked like it was that. Penny cook. They were huge. Yeah, huge cookies. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Everybody kept an eye on us. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I it almost too much. I guess right. sometimes. I remember once I had gotten a. I'd gone, walked up to the market and gotten an IBC root beer that came mm. in the, the, those brown bottles. Oh, yeah. And somebody called my mother and said I was drinking beer. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, the people know. Oh. You spent, your mama know you up here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They kept an eye Definitely. on Definitely. Bill, did you have any connections with Telefarrell's Market? Actually, I did. I was uh, fortunate enough to work for Cindy's father, her family, and um, in Laverne, at Laverne Pharmacy and Market. Also brought me up occasionally to work with Mr. Pete and Miss Blanche. Um, at the time, John T. Underwood was, was butchering. Um, and then I also had times where I would uh, go to PMB Market and, and help down there, which was Pete and Blanche's market. So, um, but no, I, I was able, uh, did most of my work with Mr. John. Um, but uh, yes, occasionally I would work with Mr. Pete. Uh, Back to you some. Something Go ahead, that, Ms. that used to we get, you know, I was always the Peter of the bunch. I always wanted to ask questions. <laughs> and uh, sometimes Mr. Johnson was in a hurry. They'd give you too much change. Mm -hmm. And we'd run home and said, oh, he gave us five cents too much or three pennies too much. They said, why did you bring it home? Because you got to take it back to us. And so we had to go back and say, you gave us too much change. I thought, why wouldn't you give us a piece of candy? <laughs> I'd always say, you know, but we said it would be three pennies or two pennies, and we'd have to take them back. Yeah, you could have had that candy eaten by the time you got home. I know. <laughs> but it, I, it probably would have told on my face, you know. They, <laughs> now we mentioned the P and B, uh, Mr. Pete and and Miss Blanche, who was Cindy's grandparents, who had Telefarrell's Market. They later on went down town Smyrna, where uh, Steve Johns' appliance store is today, and it was. They opened a market there, and it was called P and B Market, and uh, right next to Steve Johns. Was it next to Steve Johns? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Next it to it. A, yeah. And so, Cindy, did you work there any? A little bit. I mainly worked. I mainly. That's how I got to know Chief. Um, we worked together at La, at Laverne Pharmacy. Which Laverne. one of y'all was the hardest worker? Uh, definitely me. Oh, definitely, definitely you. <laughs> <laughs> they had to find me for her. <laughs> No, no. I, I, he, he helped me out a lot. He Did he know where to worker. hide? He, he, well, I can't say. Oh, you can't say? I can't. <laughs> he's, he's the chief now. My house might catch oh, on fire. Oh, okay. <laughs> and you remember my dad worked there for a long time. Yes. Paul Wright. Mr. Paul yes. did. I and love he Mr. grilled Paul. food. Oh, oh my yes. God. And, oh, and we, you know, we, he could we do get anything. some too. He, oh, Mr. He, Paul could do anything. Mr. Paul. I mean, <laughs> whatever it was, what Mr. It? Paul could do it. Yes, he For did. sure. And he loved it. And he was like, Mom was like, what time are you getting home? We well, need to bring me one of them hams on there. <laughs> <laughs> but he, lo he loved it. And, and it was just, um, he just loved doing it. He, it was, when he got home, of course, he smelled like grill, but, you know, it was good because the food was always good. Mr. Thee, you mentioned another name, Johnson. Across the street from Telefarrell's Market was another store, and I believe it was a bus stop there. The Graham bus stop might have stopped there. And also under that building was Mr. Isaac Works. That's Johnson's store. That's what I was talking about. So mm -hmm. Johnson's ran a store there also at the same time? He was there before Telefair Market. Okay. Yeah, that right beside, be, on mm -hmm, the same right side, right? Across the street. Uh -huh. Yeah, across yeah. Across the street, yeah. And behind it was the garage. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I believe that Mr. Isaac Walks also had a, like a used car lot there that that might have been from it was, overstock of Ridley Chevrolet. It was Ridley Chevrolet lot two. Uh -huh. That's what I thought. Oh, yeah. right. I didn't, lot I didn't two. Know that. But now, Mr. Johnson, what did type of products did he sell? Just like a normal He was, he was the first grocery store. He was there before Telefair Market. Okay. That used to be the store. <laughs> that was a store that y'all walked to also. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. But you had to cross the road when you got up there. Is that right? Well, Because you lived on the opposite side? I lived over here. 
You, you were talking about you and Justin a few minutes ago had yeah. to walk on the same side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you had you would to, cross, have to cross the road yeah. before yeah. you cross the main road. Yeah. So Do you look, remember Johnson's store? Mm -hmm. yeah, that was uh, the only store. They had the big bucket, and that's when you got them two for penny cookies, and then the big bucket, it was like, with a nickel or something, you know. And but you know what was amazing about it? You know, God is good. He kept us because they pump gas. They come back in and cut you off some pork chop. Right. <laughs> they go in there and get your penny Ain't cookies. Ain't nobody wash no hands. <laughs> <laughs> Just and that's all we're here today. And, and we still here. Right. And we still here. Exactly. <laughs> no you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. That's funny. Yeah. But his was like, rock it wasn't as new as you know mr pete's store it was right it was made out of rock store yeah but, but i believe it you walked out of the front of the door and you had a canopy like mm -hmm. a right. roof like mm -hmm. and then you had gas pumps gas that pump. sat right there right. Yeah. sure did sure it did. wasn't self-service they had to go out there and pump you it for pump you, it. you know? yes. yeah those days you went to drove up to the service station and they would get out and they would mm -hmm. Put, uh, check your oil, right. mm -hmm. give you tires. gas, check your tires, mm -hmm. wash your windshield. Mm -hmm. Right. All you had to do was give them the money. Give them the money. There were no credit cards back then. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. And th then another store that uh, I think Bill knows quite a bit, I think it was called Golden Campbell? Oh, the Golden <laughs> Campbell. Yeah. The, I, I, never, I never had the opportunity to go to the Golden Campbell. Uh, but it was on the corner of Rocky Fork and on Nashville Highway. And it, it, I was always curious uh, what, they, what went on in the Golden Camel. And, uh, but I, I never got to uh, visit it. We, we would ride by, my, my dad or whoever, and, uh, and I'd see it. But it, uh, someone finally burned it. I think so, yes. And, uh, Miss Steve, do you know what they did in the I, Golden Camel? Yeah, that's where you got it on. <laughs> <laughs> they had to just box you for the quarter in there and play three records, you know. <laughs> we wasn't sliding and wobbling then, John. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we're doing the Lexus slide then. Uh, what was it called? How uh, I dance. What? Just, just and we have to keep it light. <laughs> Was it ever called Criddle Store? It never was. Don't you a remember store. that? It never no. was a store. Never was a store. It's where they, they sold beer and stuff and tater chips and peanuts. Miss <laughs> <laughs> C, you know, she knows a little bit too much about this thing. <laughs> yeah, she knows a little bit more about, about this store, don't she? She had three records for a quarter. <laughs> Play three records for a quarter. Three records for a quarter. Oh, she Go. really knows. That was fun. <laughs> I, I, was, I don't know lady. if there's any truth in it or not, but I was told you could get a cold beer in there. So what? I said, I don't know if it was true or not, but I was always told you could get a cold beer. That was a, that was a drink. Oh, just in the golden Just cold camel. beer. Uh, mm -hmm. How much was the beer? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Steve, I don't want to put you on the spot, but, <laughs> but does your mother and daddy know that you were there? Sometimes, yeah, no. <laughs> uh, no. That was off limit. That was a little bit off limit. So you were sneaky, sneaky? You know, we just go in and little guys play records for us and we dance. <laughs> okay. We had coats, but we didn't have the, they wouldn't sell us a beer though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bill, you didn't even get, you, didn't you say you, uh, Bill's got all these pictures. How many pictures have you got? How many did you tell me and Miss the other day? I take I take a hundred to a thousand oh, pictures a week. A hundred to a thousand a week. Mm -hmm. but, and, but you never got a picture of the Golden never Camel. Never got a picture that of the just, Golden Camel. Are there any pictures of the Golden Camel? I, Probably not. No, so. And <laughs> Probably I can't not. find any pictures of the old gymnasium either. Oh, you can't? Oh, I've tried school. to find mm -hmm. those. And I, I had no luck. You, you mentioned a name there a few minutes ago that, that was... Uh, the family was was very prominent here in Smyrna. Was the Richardson Mooney and and Miss Dars? I can recall first knowing them up at the Omni Hut. Yes, sir. One of them cooked, or did yeah, Miss Mooney was a chef. Yeah. was the mm -hmm. chef there, mm -hmm. and, and Miss Dars worked there also. But the Omni Hut, which is closed today, 
was a prominent heating establishment here in Smyrna that if you got to go there, you were in high cotton. Mm -hmm. And yeah. people from all over the country, uh, all, over the, all over the county in, in Middle Tennessee wanted to come to the Omni Hut because it was a different type of food than what our normal beans and potatoes was. Yeah. Talking about Doris and, 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 and Mooney, they came back and they opened a barbecue spot across the street where you're talking about the golden camel there. And it was the place to go to if you wanted barbecue, if you wanted ribs or baked beans or any of that kind of stuff, they were good. That was a good thing. They catered. They catered? They, they would, uh, they catered uh, my sister, uh, Sam Ridley, uh, Mary and Sarah Crockett. They held a dinner for Pam when she was getting married. And he come up bringing that hog out, yeah. fully cooked, and it was the darnest thing I ever saw. Darn. <laughs> <laughs> but I was I was amazed at that uh, at that hog. Yeah. I, mean, I recall that he had that apple in his in he his sure mouth. Did. Yes. Yes. Do you recall the moon is barbecue? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We'd go. We'd walk up there, and and uh, we Mooney. Sometimes we, you know, we wouldn't have any money, and we'd say, you know, we, can we get some French fries? He's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I keep I keep a tab for your daddy. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> we. Well, no, I don't know the statue's limitations. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Coon, I, I was more, a little bit more to go back to Rosenwald. This is a replica of right, the this is it. original school, right? Well, mm -hmm. was, it, was it this big? I wonder. Probably wasn't much bigger yes, because, let's see. I'm trying to see how it, I could tell by this right here. And that's the actual picture of it right there. Isn't it? And that building stood for a long time. I mean, I remember oh, as a did. little girl in the 70s, it was still standing. It was one, two. Well, now, yeah. It was only four rooms. Four, it had four rooms. Because mm -hmm. these right here the lunch room. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. I remember it. And behind there was the first grade room. And this is Mr. Washington's room. And then Miss Codright's room was back there. Was Mr. Washington Bo's daddy? Uh huh. He okay. was the principal. Okay. Right, yeah, he was. Yeah. And then later on, they they built two more rooms to it and brought Miss Coral Vaughn's and Miss Hamilton. Mm -hmm. So it, it they had two more rooms added to this, but this is it right here. So it was one, two, three, four, and four rooms. I believe when I what I was reading about about it, I had to refresh my memory, but. Rosenwald, I believe that 5,000 schools across the South and other states he did. that he built. And I, I wasn't aware that he collaborated with the man that uh, Sears and Robot, Sears and Robot. Mr. Sears. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Julius Rosenwald. Julius Rosenwald, that's right. Mm -hmm. where, where did it actually sit? The school? Yes, ma'am. I, I, I remember it right on the corner of Nora Peebles and Enon Springs. Yeah, come on up yeah. some. Come up well, we played ball. Bit. That would be yeah. 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 Come on up a little bit, maybe about halfway there. Where, across from the Jenkins family. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. It was a little bit up from the Jenkins. It wasn't yeah. directly across from across the Jenkins, from, mm -hmm. but it was just a little, a little bit, bit over there. That boy. Like you said, the cut right there. In the cut. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, when I, I remember. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember yeah. for some reason. Did they ever move it? Mm mm. It well, and where the, the they tore it down, I want to say in the '70s, and then so it's really where that the open space is. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. I mean, where that open space. I don't yeah. know who owns that land now. Do you know, Mr. Talavera? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And but, and uh, behind it is uh, uh, Peebles. Mm hmm No maze. I can remember the school being on that corner, and I think they burned it. It burned. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. it burned. That's right. It burned and then mm -hmm. they tore it down. But it was the original. Yeah. School. Yeah, yeah. And which right. corner was it on? It wasn't on the corner. No. Well, so where the open space is now, right there, um, if, you're, if you're heading towards uh, Hilltop, Old Nashville Highway and Ian Springs, 
it's on the right, like before you get to, when you pass Nora Peebles, before you get to the first house, that kind okay, of open that, space there. That land. Okay. Right, does that sound right to you? That's, You're right. That's where it sat. Mm -hmm. oh. I was thinking it was on the opposite side. Mm -mm. Uh, Pat, you mentioned that the Rosen Wall was a hand and uh, Sears and Roebuck man uh, had money to where they could build these 5,000 schools. And it, I had a little write up here that says the Rosenwald School was built in Smyrna in 1927. There were five teachers, which was the largest school for African Americans in Rutherford County. The school remained open until 1960 when it was relocated on the old Nashville Highway, which is we call Smyrna West, where Jocelyn attended school there. And then in 2000, the town of Smyrna received a seven acre land donation from the heirs of D.E. Coleman. An additional 9.3 acres land was purchased, later purchased from the heirs of Leon Alford to build Hilltop Park, which opened in 2003, which we are in today. And here's some other things that I, I found about the crew. Now here on this right up, it says the frame building had four rooms, which might have been from the start and one was a kitchen. In order for the school to get Rosenwald funds, these conditions had to be met. The school had to be for children from the county or for small communities. Also, the building had to be painted inside and out with two coats of paint. Each classroom must have 20 linear feet of blackboard and desks suitable for pupils and teachers. There should be two cloakrooms and a small kitchen the school term should be at least five months per year. And you, I remember when I went to school, even in high school, we still had the, uh, what do I call those boards? Those uh, chalkboards. Chalkboards is what I called them. Because I remember sometimes when I got in trouble with a teacher, I would have to, she'd draw that circle up there and I'd have to put my nose, my tiptoes on your nose. Know, I'd stand on your tiptoes to do that. But, uh, but uh, that, that uh, school that we're talking about, the, yes, Pastor, we're in a replica of it, of it today. I tell you what I, I, was always amazing to me going there. Joe Richardson down the hill from us was the custodian for Smyrna and he would go and start a fire and we could see the smoke from their Smyrna, Smyrna school. They, but when we got to school, we had to keep our coats on. And then the big boys, the eighth, seventh, eighth grade would go down and start a fire for us. And so we sit in class with our coats on. And I, I told my grandmother, you know, you couldn't talk say very much because they smacked you in the mouth. <laughs> and I said, why wouldn't you go and start our fire too? <laughs> but they were paying him. <laughs> That was his job, you know. But I always wonder why Mr. Cook wouldn't start a fire for our school because we had to sit in the room with, you know, wait till it warmed up. Uh, Miss Steve, you mentioned those days at Old Jefferson, where I went to elementary school for eight years. Uh, it was four classrooms, two two teachers per. I mean, two classes per room with one teacher in each room. And you mentioned that stove. We had a pot-bellied stove right. there that the seventh and eighth grade boys would go out behind the building and get the coal right. and bring it in and start the fire start every the morning. Fire. Uh, we also had to go outside of that building to use the bathroom right. and, and the outside uh, toilet. Uh, mm -hmm. We at Old Jefferson when I was in eighth grade is when we got our inside. inside uh, and then the, the, the Mr. Washington, A.D. Washington, would go when he get to school. He would go and check the outside toilets, and if it was paper or something on the floor, then he would whip all the boys. I mean that was and, the, and but it was a neighborhood through the weekend. So why were we responsible for it? Right. <laughs> but you know you had to go up and do it like this, and you get one pound, yeah. one, do your hand back like that. We lived through it, but I just saw everybody goes down there on the weekend. <laughs> Uh, Miss T, we but didn't know any better. You're right. That's all we had. That's all we had. All we had. And they wanted to keep it clean. Exactly. And tidy it up, so they wanted to make sure we didn't throw paper and stuff around. That's probably the only whipping I ever got was talk the girls' bathroom. But but we talk about these families that was here at Hilltop. That that you mentioned, Mr. Joe Richardson's, and then I missed I remember James and Sabra Johnson, 
uh, Mr. Jeff Green and all his family who was tremendous athletes at Smyrna High School. Uh, Jack, uh, Mr. Jack Jenkins. The oh, Jenkins, yeah. yeah. Jack Jenkins. The Miles, and I might be talking some of your... The Miles are my people. That's her family. Oh, family, yeah. okay. Mm-hmm. The Pattons, you know, my grandfather. The Pattons, the Curtis Malones, Patton, the, Malone. the Dillards. Mm-hmm. The Dillards, yeah. yes. Yeah. It was a lot of us. <laughs> yeah. And, and one of the names that still sticks out today is Miss Normay. Miss Normay Oh, Peoples. absolutely. Everybody yes. loved Ms. And, and knew Miss Normay. She probably... Now, Miss Thee, you knew Bill when he was young? I used to babysit. Bill. Oh, you babysit him. <laughs> Yeah. I was the sweetest <laughs> baby you ever kept, wasn't I? So, no, I don't. Yes. But I wouldn't whip him. I let Norma whip him. I tell Norm, him. Norma made me go get my own switch. She sure did. <laughs> and tell his daddy. And then tell daddy, but she could, she could take that switch and get me coming and going. Because <laughs> his sister was real quiet. She would, would, she would, which, would she hold you by your hand? If, would she hold you by well, your no, hand? I would, I'd be running. <laughs> <laughs> now, if she caught me, I was in the air. <laughs> but I had to go get my own switch. And like I said, I'd, I'd be running and she'd get both cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> I knew she'd get your bill. Would you consider telling us how John Tolliver and Frank Crosson Jr. decorated your home for your anniversary. So Esther and I, we got married on a, on a Saturday night. And so then we left the next, we left at night, we went to Gatlinburg. I had never heard of Gatlinburg, never been to Gatlinburg. So we got drive up and we didn't have any interstates in. We went up the old highway through uh, uh, Cross, I mean, uh, uh, not Crossville, but uh, Cookville. Cove going up that way, and and uh, so then we came back, and when we came back to our house on probably Tuesday, or Wednesday morning, because we didn't have enough money to stay too long there in Gatlinburg, <laughs> so we came back. We noticed that we got ready to uh, get in the bed. That, no, when we first got in, we noticed over next to our bed was a what we called a slop jar mm-hmm. or a chamber. And it had a hot dogs that was cut up and vinegar that was in there. So you knew exactly what it looked like. And so we just thought, oh, it smelled awful. We smelled awful. But it was just vinegar and, and, and the hot dogs. We got ready to get in bed, pulled the sheets back, and had all rice in there. Oh. So all rice was in there. So we had to, we had to clean, clean our sheets before we could go to bed. Now that was... That was John, your daddy, Frank Jr. crawled him, my brother-in-law, and Bob Gwynn was all the three musketeers in Smart <laughs> I didn't know Mr. Bob was in there. It was at that Full time. Pranks. But we really had a good experience at Hilltop. And then in, uh, we got married in 67, so about 1970, uh, a house came vacant down on Bain Drive. And so we moved down to Bain Drive and I drove a pickup truck for Crossing Supply that had kettle racks on it that where I could haul windows and doors on it. We moved, we moved everything that we had with two loads in that pickup truck. So, you were also active in the guard, were you not? Uh, do what? You were also active in the guard. Oh, the National Guard? Yes, I was in the National Guard and John, her daddy. <laughs> this, was, this was my first year in the National Guard, and, and John was in his last year of National Guard. And so we had to go to the rifle range in Tullahoma, and it was raining and raining. It was awful. So John says, Coon, come on, go with me. I said, no, I can't go with you. I'm scared. He said, no, come on, go with me. So he went over to the first sergeant. He said, Sergeant Hester, me and Victor's got to go into town. And uh, he said, uh, when will you be back? Tolliver, and he said, we'd be back in the morning. We went to the hotel oh. in, in, in Manchester. We, we 
John got us a room. We stayed in that hotel. We came back the next morning, and our clothes was all dry and neat and everything. Those other boys, that they had slept, it had come probably five or six inches of rain that night. And so those boys, they looked at us like we were crazy. Where y'all been? Where y'all been? We, John and I never did tell the truth where we'd been. So, so John, John helped me out, helped me out that night. Yeah. But I was thinking, of, you know, being maybe the oldest here. No, you're not. Mm -mm. You're not the, mm -mm. I'm not the oldest mm -mm. here today. No. Well, okay. You might be close. I'm getting close. I'm 79. And so I can oh, think of back. <laughs> okay. I look <laughs> happy. <laughs> you wear it well. <laughs> you do too. <laughs> but anyway, I, 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 earlier I had said I moved to Laverne. And so while we left uh, sitting here now thinking and how Smyrna is today, and I remember Smyrna back in the older days. We had to go to Laverne to live because we tried to buy a house. Now, first we purchased the land where my house is now. And they said it wouldn't perk, so we couldn't build a house. And you couldn't build an outside toilet then. So that acre and three-fourths, we couldn't use it. So then we bought the land. I still, I live in Smyrna all these years, and I still get these streets from it. That's in the spring out there, right? And around that curve, a little before you get that curve, by the Johnny Menlo's, and we own a piece of land. We bought a piece of, uh, about a half an acre there to build a house. And they wouldn't build us a house there. They said it was too adjacent to the city. So then we tried to purchase a house. I look at my little house now. I always call it my house. <laughs> if you go down Hazelwood and coming back from, you know, going down, it's the third house before you get to that little bridge. This, uh, you know, home the, over off of Hazelwood Drive. But if you could sit, just say we went down Old National Highway, turned on Hazelwood. Yes. And then head back. Uh huh. To, Towards the high smart, school. Uh huh. It's three, it's three houses one, two, three. The third one I always called my house. Okay. And we tried to purchase that house and they wouldn't sell us that house. And uh, uh, the real estate man told us, said that. They said we were good people, but because of our color, we couldn't, we, they wouldn't sell us the house. So I remember Smyrna back in the day when I had to leave and go to Laverne and live on, you know, I lived at Fish Drive for 24 years, but then I came back home. And then I thank God that my house now is over there on Mason Tucker, where I couldn't get it, you know, in the early 70s. So I can look at Smyrna and see the growth and the change. The younger people, Jocelyn, I was always, we started that hilltop community group with at her mother's table when we was trying to get a park over here. So we'd go back, you know, they were children then, but I remember when it wasn't this way it is now, and I'm thankful I can see the growth of Smyrna and the difference and the change, you know. Well, now, when you, <laughs> when you left Smyrna West, yeah. Did you experience that going to the rock school? Um, not a lot. I mean, there were some that were just obvious. I think, you know, we were like more inquisitive about them and they were inquisitive <laughs> about us. Like, and so what we knew was we were athletes or whatever. They, you know, I had like Cindy McGlunk, Tim Penny's daughter and all them. And, you know, so everybody just, we, we tried to, not to make it a big deal, yeah. but you know, there were times when there were some issues. And so I didn't know what Foursquare was. So they taught me Foursquare and, and then we were basketball players. But I think the one really huge thing that happened and, and we were like basketball players against the cheerleaders, so whites and blacks. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, there was an issue and we were all in home ec. And so we just all got, to, I mean, that's just what you do. And, and it happens and it got a little racial. And so I went straight home to my mama, you know, and I'm like, and so mama, they said they going to, like they were going to actually uh, let the, the cheerleaders, you know, go because they talked to the cheerleaders, said that they were okay, but we were going to get expelled, the basketball players. And so, I, and she was like, oh, really now? And so she said, so she got us up, okay, let's go. We're going to see rakes right now. And so, and, I, and she said, but here's mama, she said, you better be telling me the truth. Cause I won't go up here, you know, and you're not telling us about my promise. And so it was, it was a life changing experience because she went in there very, you know, but very, very, you know, nice and cool. She said, so here's what I hear. She said, and I'm hearing that you're going to expel, you know, the black cheer, I mean, the black basketball players. And, and so Coach Rake said, I called him that. He said, 
Well, the cheerleaders said, da 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 da, and they invited them outside, and they were gonna fight. And she said, he said, uh, she said, so that's what the cheerleaders said. She said, now what did the basketball player say? Well, I really had time to talk to him. She said, excuse me? Mm -hmm. And then my mom was just kind of like that. She said, you hadn't had time to talk to them. So you gonna, she said, well, here's what you're not gonna do. And, and this is how she said it. She said, so if you're gonna expel them, you're gonna expel the others. She said, if you're gonna do that, then I'm going to the board in Murfreesboro, and we're gonna talk about this, and we're gonna tell them. He said, well, no, 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 no. You don't need to do that. <laughs> He's like, here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna let us She said, no. She said, this is the time that we need to like talk this out. You know, if we need to get both people, both of them on the same side. She said, but you're not going to punish the blacks and not punish the whites, or if you, everybody's got to be on the same. And she said, and I'm sure, she said, I know my daughter, she's probably saying something. I said, oh, I was in. <laughs> but it, that was the biggest racial thing that ever, that I happened, that happened. But my mom was like, and she was cool. She said, but you're not going to discriminate against my child, you know, and all of them actually. And, and he, and then her and Rakes came, became the best, you know, because he, he said, you know what? He said, you're right. He said, and, and I really, she said, but I, I don't know. I guess he just felt like, you know, this is what he had to do because of the way the times were. But mom was like, no, you're not going to do that. And so, so there were instances, uh, but my mama took care of me. So, <laughs> so you were actually, at, at, at that time, you were on the school at on, uh, Hazelwood. Mm -hmm. I was with yeah. Weird Hazelwood, yeah. and I was on the basketball team, and and it was you just have just those rivalries sometimes, you know. But it really, yeah, and and we had this really humble little home ec teacher, and she just got scared because we did we start arguing in home ec, and that was not good. Oh yeah, she was like, oh my god, I gotta go get her done. <laughs> she was like not feeling it at all, and and so so I went home and told my mama. You yeah, know, that was all you had to do. That's what you do. And then, you but but she mama. was like, make sure you tell me the truth. Don't, don't sugarcoat it. This is how it happened. I said, this is how it happened. And then she called other parents, you know, she was one of those like, tell me what happened. And, and that's what, what happened. And, 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 but eventually we got over it. We, but then but, when my daughter got there in 84, it was a homecoming queen. Yeah. Then we had to, you know, I had to go through the fact that Break said that they were going to throw eggs on her that night. And he called in extra police to have that, that there that night. So they wouldn't throw eggs on her. And then her experience as a cheerleader, she, they wouldn't tell her what color of panties they were wearing, no purple, gold, and white. And so I said, put on all three. And then when you find out what they got on, <laughs> then you bring them to the sideline and bring them to me. You, you know, we, we experienced that, but you know, she, she, you know, we're not bitter about it, but those are some of the challenges that we had to go through so when I go to the ball game now, you know, the kids don't think nothing like that. But we were bridge builders, I guess, because I really experienced that. And so tell us about Miss Catherine's. She used to have dinners down near the church. What, I can't recall what they were, if it was a church-related thing, or she just, or was it a committee or? You said what? Dinner? Miss Catherine used to have. Well, everybody eat at their house. At my house. Well, yeah, I knew that. <laughs> but, but they would have uh, over here. Over here at the church. Church, okay. We, oh. I want to say it was like on Saturdays. She may he may be talking about that big picnic thing it, it, we had the we community. Did, yeah, we used to have community things. Right. Yes, mm -hmm. and and so everybody would come, and, and we were like, and it was really more like. Um, uh, fundraiser, right? It was a fundraiser type, but but she would she would organize it. There's so many, so, but most so of it was done at her table but, because when yeah. it first started off, it was one Sunday evening. I was up there probably eating, mm -hmm. and we decided to get this community group yeah. together, and then we would have these uh, fundraisers. And yeah. that's during the time we was trying to get a park. That's right. what we was trying to organize and, a park. So well, we I, I park. can remember sending a fire truck to show the children. Yep, you brought and then, them. And then I remember yes. they came back and told me what the menu consisted of. And you came back? And I came back and I ain't never missed one yet. 
<laughs> yeah, because you always put the tin up for us and everything. That's one thing. Hilltop mm -hmm. had great cooks. Everybody had their specialties, right. what they cooked. And, you know, and then on Sunday evenings, everybody would, most people in our house at Hilltop. And I never understood, you know, she had seven kids, but everybody took a plate home. And then we still had stuff on Monday, you know. And I'm like, I, how did that happen? But but we were just a community, but that's that was her. That was her. That's what I loved about the I was just talk. like eating at Norma's. Mm -hmm. Yes. Go in no the right. front door. Yes. Mm -hmm. Go out and go around the back to the <laughs> kitchen and <laughs> get another Rose. get another plate full. I love her homemade rolls. Yeast oh rolls. God. Oh, my God, yeah. Everybody but that's what you dishes. miss now is mm -hmm. that connection, the way Do you bake yeast rolls? So, <laughs> I ate a lot of Norma's. Oh, <laughs> we both did. <laughs> My daughter told me, she said, while you were there watching them coming out the stove, you should have been watching them put it, mix it together. Mix it. I know. And they were always perfect. Mm -hmm. And even at our churches so and our dinners and, you know, certain people. And if you get to work in the back, then you get the kitchen help. You they sample. The, oh, yeah, you got the good stuff. So they put some good caramel cakes back in, in the corner. So when we got food, we got to get some. I mean, we serve some every two. But, <laughs> but I'm going to tell you about Jocelyn. The mother made the best peach cobbler, and it was probably a pan like this, but it wasn't that long. And she would bring it always to the church when we had gatherings and dinners. And they would come through there. I want my mama's peach cobbler. Where's my mama's? <laughs> and you may go up there Monday or Tuesday, and peach cobbler is still on the stove. But when they got to church, they wanted mama's peach cobbler. I can see an older brother now. Well, I don't see mama's I peach cobbler out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we would say, who made that? Oh, Miss Nome. Oh, yeah, give me some of that. You know. Yeah. So we knew the that we knew funny. the cooks. We knew the cooks. We knew the so. cook. We well, sh we we almost did. <laughs> <laughs> but I've got some for recipes, so I still bake like her. Yeah. I always tell people I'm I'm a better person for how I was brought up. Yes. You know, of course, yeah. most attributed to my parents and. And uh, we were just neighbors. And me and my siblings, we always used to talk about sitting on the front porch and you get tired of waving. I mean, cause they just come up and down, up and down and they blow every time. And it's the same people. <laughs> we be like, we tired of waving. Mama said, wave girl, just wave. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, really, and, and even with some of the, the, the things that, you know, we've gone through uh, now, I'm able to, I was able to, to talk to my children and I've shared even at Trevecca recently about, you know, the racism and the issues. And I say, uh, I said, one of the things that I, I think I've changed, as people say we don't see color. You see the color, but it doesn't matter to right. you. Right. You know, it's the person. Exactly. I said, don't say that you don't see color. I said, but, you know, my, my son and daughter grew up totally different because of the age difference. And so I didn't let my daughter spend the night with white friends because not because I, did, I was just very afraid you know because I didn't know but my son he's totally different and he wanted every white boy in the United States to come and spend the night with him and so but the, and he has all of most of his friends are you know white so I, I think it's it's how again how our parents taught us and to love and how you raise them and and even though you know it hurts me to see it um, you know, I put my faith and trust in God, and I know that God is the one that's going to, you know, ultimately have to, 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 to touch people's hearts to understand that he made all of us, you know, and so there's no, you know, no one is better than the other, but I've, I've tried to make sure that my children grew up like my parents taught us, you know, and so, but she was like, but always be careful though, you know, parents are always like very careful about their kids, but still, and they'll say, now this one, you don't have to worry about, we're good, so. So that's that's what my, my takeaway from being in Hilltop, and I, I I left once and came right back. So <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Miss Thee, anything else you want to bring up? No, I that? just think about all of what we've been through back in the day. It's part of our history, but it didn't make us bitter. You know what I'm saying? Right. But you know now I can see the growth of Smyrna, and I told you I went to Laverne for 24 years, and I headed back home. <laughs> Yes, we have a good community. Right. We have a good we have good people. Right. Good people. Now we got two or three sour apples, but most of us are, are good people. Right. Good people. You're right. Sister Brown, you have anything else you want to bring up? No, I just appreciate these folks being here. It's a great, great uh, session. You giving us this 
opportunity to share. Yeah, and we hope that the people that's watching will be able to learn something about the way Hilltop was before and the way it is today. Yeah. Okay. And if you have a picture of the golden camel, <laughs> please, <laughs> please email it. <laughs> Email it to bill.colbertson at townofsmyrna.org. <laughs> better, better yet, you have a picture of Miss B. Right. Miss B might have a picture put that, of the Putting the money in the jukebox. <laughs> I couldn't have no picture of the... <laughs> now, you didn't have a picture. Now, we weren't taking no picture. That picture couldn't get out. Miss <laughs> B, you can share it now. That's, that's good. Because they're gone. Yeah, they're gone. <laughs> Oh boy, that's All right. Thanks, thanks for y'all wanting to help us, Beth and I, with this, with our program. And we hope that mm -hmm. the, that we can continue these types Absolutely. of programs.